That's on the uh, big teardrop dodger. Ooh, this thing is wet. So it's very strange. The surface temperature here is 65, and yet there's kokanee feeding on the surface all the way down to 60. And uh, this year the fish have pretty heavy infestations of copepods, which doesn't surprise me because these fish are feeding in near lethally warm water. Uh, so that water can, high water temp can make them more vulnerable to parasites like copepods. The copepod here is called Salmon Cola californiensis. It looks like little grains of rice stuck on their gills and on their sides and around their fins especially. Uh, so I did some reading on it. Um, you know, I was kind of interested in what are some predictors of copepod density and why do we see outbreaks like this. And there does seem to be a lot of evidence that uh, they do better in warmer temperatures, like warmer than what's ideal for kokanee, which is 54. Ooh, nice fish. It speeds up their life cycle so they can build up their numbers faster and then thus you get heavier parasite loads on the fish. Okay, come here, fatty. Oh, don't do that. There you go. Got him. There we go. First one of the day. Nice fatty. And he's got pretty heavy parasite load. A lot, a lot on the belly here. I can show you that. You can see all those red marks, the sores from the, from the parasites themselves. And they're like little, tiny little rice grains like stuck to the skin. They also get them in the gill. These are piggy uh, kokanee though. So it's interesting when I looked at the data they studied an outbreak of uh, a couple of pods at Blue Mesa Reservoir in Colorado. Um, yeah so these couple of pods are native to the west coast where they uh, you know attack salmon species that's what they're adapted to. Attack. Although they can get on trout as well. And they found in this study in Colorado that like one of the best predictors of copepod density during the initial outbreak was the size of the kokanee. So, so the bigger and older a kokanee is, the more likely it is to be infected with copepods. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, here at Whiskey Town, the fish are big. You can see the little rice sized grains there sticking out of the side of them. That's the that's the parasite itself. They usually get them on the belly, around the fins, and in the gills. And so, yeah, it kind of makes sense to me, like, what's going on here at Whiskey Town. And I think a lot of people see it in their lakes, too, is, you know, when you get these warmer water years, the fish will get heavier infestations of those copepods. And you'll also tend to see it on, on bigger you also tend to see it on bigger fish as well, so that makes sense. It's an easier target for the parasites to locate. There's more surface area for them to occupy. And uh, thus you get more parasite loads on them. I saw some studies where, they, you know, once they start getting, you know, 50 or more couple pods on the fish per fish, then it can start to cause problems for the fish. It usually doesn't affect the meat. I'm even like right underneath the skin because they just, they're really just subcutaneous. Like they don't really penetrate deep into the flesh. Um, so, you know, even on fish that have had pretty heavy infestations, I don't really notice it in the meat quality, but I'm sure it could potentially impact it. Um, their long-term health, which probably impacts the quality of the meat. Uh, it could, could make them anemic because the parasites are stealing lots of nutrients um, and iron from their blood. But it can also lead to subsequent uh, infections and things like that and just weaken their immune system overall. Let's see if we can get a few more before I have to leave for the day.
Look at that, look at that giant kokanee right there just jumped right beside me. That was cool. See, I think they're doing that. It's not like a feeding behavior. They're coming up sideways, like porpoising multiple times, the same individual. I think they're doing that to knock the copepods off of their side. I think it's an irritant to them. It's like, I know whales would kind of do the same thing. Helps them. They breach and rub themselves on things to try and scrape off those uh, parasite loads. And I think these kokanee, they're getting sores on the sides too, where there's copepods. And I think, you know, it just itches or it's irritating to them and they rub it against like the bottom or they smash their sides on the surface by jumping like that. I might be completely wrong on that, but it just seems illogical the way these big fish are up here in 65 degrees of water. I mean, that's a near lethal and uh, jumping around like that. There's fish. <laughs> nice. That was on the skateboard dodger. So it really does beg the question, you know, what are these kokanee doing up in water temperatures that are really high above their normal ideal water temp? I haven't dropped my uh, fish hawk down yet, but I'm going to. But my sneaky suspicion is that it's pretty warm, it's fairly deep, and that's allowing these copepod uh, infestation to uh, really peak. And the fish are bigger, so there's just more potential hosts for the copepods. But what I think is going on is that the food resources that the the kokanee want are are still relatively high in the water column. There's more plankton. These fish are very very large and very fat. They're eating extremely well, but I think they're having to live in less than ideal water temperatures in order to access those food resources. And it's just helping to push this outbreak of copepods here at Whiskey Town. And I've seen the same sort of scenario happen in other lakes as well. So. Feels like a good fish. Stay on there, buddy. All right, let's speed up. Okay. That's a nice fish. That's how Sidra scoops them. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Pretty. Oh, and he's off right away. It's a good thing I had a good stab. Beautiful. That one doesn't have many coat pods on it. It's pretty clean. All right, I'm gonna drop my fish hawk down there. Snap this in. Turn. This is gonna give me a see a picture of the water column depth. Let's see what's going on down there. Go down to. Hopefully get down to like 80 feet here. I think that'll be a good enough picture. I don't need to go all the way to the bottom of 110. Let's see what this uh, water column temperature at depth gradient looks like. All right, so 64 at the top. 64, 65, 65 at 10 feet, 65 at 15 feet, 65 at 20 feet, 65 at 25 feet, 64 at 30. I mean, this is where I'm catching the fish at, it's primarily around 30, 40 feet. It's 61 at 35 feet, 58 at 40 feet, 56.9 at 45 feet, 56.5 at 50, 56 at 55, 55.6 at 60, 55.3 at 65, 54.7, that's like ideal water temperatures for kokanee is at 70 and still 54 at 75 and then starts dropping into the lower 50s at 80. Gets down to 52 around 90 feet. So it might be anoxic down there too. Um, and that bit might be why they're kind of hanging up higher in the water column. There might not be enough oxygen down at those extreme depths for them, which is why the bulk of the fish seem to be in the 30 to 40 feet. So they're definitely heat stressed 
right now, which is going to contribute to copepods. And it's time for me to pack it in just a handful of fish today, but I only could fish from sunrise till 8 o'clock. Sure, I could grind out my last two if I wanted to, but I've got like an eight hour drive north, so just gonna cut my day short and uh, be happy with the handful of beautiful fish I got. In my experience, these cup pods, you know, they tend to go in like outbreaks, will come and go, and uh, you know, they don't, for me, I haven't seen a significant drop off in the quality of the meat it just doesn't look very nice having all those parasites on the outside of the fish so while they might look a little bit unsightly these um coke pods are very specific to salmon as their hosts and they don't represent any sort of significant threat to people and like i said if you if you like have the coke pods on the outside of the fish and you fillet them it's really hard to see the impact on the meat below it even really close to the skin so all right, guys, I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye.